Hi everyone. So when we left off with the last tutorial, we had uh, something like this on the screen, fishnets with a bunch of counts of um, numbers of trees within each of those fishnet grid cells. Um, one of the asks for your lab report is to also include some pie chart or bar chart information um, in your case for the lab report, uh, not with this data set, but I wanted to do a quick go through of how to do um, some pie charts with these data. Um, the first thing that you need to know about the way that ARC uh, operates with pie charts and bar charts or stacked bar charts, they have three different options in ARC Pro. A pie chart, a bar chart where like all of the bars are sort of lined up next to each other and a stacked bar chart where all of the bars are stacked on top of each other. Um, the way that you need to put those data to tell ARC to, uh, to make a pie chart or bar chart is that they actually have to be in different fields. So you have to have a field for um, you know, like object number one that you want in your bar chart, object number two, object number three, and so on to all of the things that you want to be in your bar chart. Um, which means that if we take a look at what's currently, you know, in our fishnet, uh, that means that ultimately what we want here is a column for, um, and what I'm gonna do in this example is to make some pie charts of tree species or tree genera, I think, because there's a lot of species in this data set. So we'll pick a couple of different uh, genera of trees and stick them in here. So for example, we might want a column for maple, a column for oak, a column for pine, and a column for everything else. Uh, that seems like a good place to start. So let's go with maple, oak, pine, and other stuff. Now, the information about maples and oaks and pines is not in our fishnet yet. We need to get it there. It is instead in our campus tree data set. Um, remember that we've got in here the information about the fishnet ID that we used a spatial join to get that in there um, in the last tutorial. So that's good. That means we can follow the similar, similar steps that we did um, in the previous tutorial, except this time, what we want to do is to identify, you know, the different genera that we're looking for. Um, okay, so the way that I would approach this is, and I'm going to do this simply because there are lots of different individual species in here, um, but let's start with maples. So the genus for maple is Acer. Um, that's convenient <laughs> from my memory on here that the common name is also written in there. So if we want to count up the number of acers in each of these grid cells, how do we do that? The way I would do it is to use the selection tools um, and find all of the genus equal to, and luckily this has a drop down menu so I don't even have to type anything in, um, and find all of my maples within this data set. Um, and then we can use the power of <laughs> the selection with, uh, with GIS to remember that, you know, for these 1141 uh, maples in here, if I again summarize um, as I've done a few times before to count the numbers of trees or to get diversity or whatever it is, um, I can once again just get my count of fishnet IDs, making sure that we're um, including fishnet ID and output whatever this table, I'm just, I'm not bothering to rename the tables at this point, um, but maybe I should over here because I wanna remember that this is for Acer. I might forget that later on. It's not gonna be anywhere in this table. It's just gonna call, again, count fishnet ID. In this case, this is count of Acer, right? So now I can go back to the process that I've done before um, a bunch of different times and add the join um, by my fishnet ID to my Acers, okie doke. Let's open up my attribute table here. And then like I've done before, I'm going to add a field. I'm gonna call it um, count of Acer, 
long integer is totally fine because the numbers are, you know, going to be between one and 100, probably something like that. Count acer, we'll just call the alias exactly the same. And then, hmm, interesting. Apparently I opened it twice. Let's not do that again. Calculating the field, remembering that this is my count of fishnet ID is the thing that is actually the number of uh, maples in that area. So I should be able to scroll down, you know, at some point in here, there's gonna be some four maples and fishnet ID 608. Okay, so what I want you to do if you're working through this is to do that same process for your oaks, which are Quercus as the genus, and for your pines, which should be Pinus as the genus, and then catch up with me uh, in just a moment. Right, so I just repeated that same process for that we did for the maple, for the oaks, for the pines, and then I did a select of everything that wasn't maples, oaks, and pines to do a count of all other species or genera of trees um, in each of those fishnet cells, and then joined them all up, um, added the new fields for each of these, uh, and copied them over from the count of fishnet ID. So hopefully that worked for you guys and we'll get kind of similar answers. So I am working in the symbology now of my fishnet and I've set it up so that I have a unique column for each of the different types of things that I want to symbolize with a pie chart. And uh, pie charts are going to look nicer if we kind of zoom in and put the pie charts on top of the squares. Um, pie charts are going to be pretty um, responsive to your level of zoom and you, I mean you'll be able to tell it how big you want the, the pie charts to be but um, it looks a little bit better if you can actually fit the pie charts inside of stuff. So I'm going to close that so that we can kind of like see where everything is. Okay, so instead of graduated color, um, we want to use charts. And I'm gonna go with um, the pie chart that we can explore other ones as well. And so down here is where you put in the fields that you want to include in that pie chart. So in our case, we want the numbers of maples, we want the numbers of uh, oaks, the numbers of pines and everything else. And you'll notice that it's not giving me the option of repeating the same one, which is a nice feature in there. Um, okay, and the, the um, another really nice feature is that the symbology over here that you would get um, if we added um, a layout view and put a legend in also does a nice job of sort of adding each of those ones in. Um, so they're pretty easy to, to see. If you don't like those colors, we can, you know, just sort of like randomly swap them out or, you know, of course we can adjust each color manually if you wanted. I like the last one better. All right, that, that one looks okay to me. All right, so good. Um, that is how you would do pie charts. Uh, you know, a stacked bar chart uh, is gonna look like this, you know, same, same information, just a different way to visualize it. A regular bar chart, same information, also just a different way to visualize it. And in these cases, um, we're really not seeing the small bars because you know other species in some of these cases are just kind of dwarfing the total numbers of things. Um, so depending on whether you want really to visualize the numbers of things which are going to show up nicely in a bar chart versus the sort of proportions of things but not really the numbers of them, um, that the, the pie chart is better for that. Although we can actually choose uh, to have the size be based on the size, uh, the numbers of trees and those things. And then you can start getting into these pretty nifty symbologies of, you know, bigger 
pie chart means more trees and this is the proportion of all of those trees. Super, so that's it as far as a brief overview of making pie charts and bar charts and how to get your data into the right format to do so. See you guys in class.